Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Robin Beeman from James Cook University on board the RV Falcor. Uh, we're coming to you live from the far northern Great Barrier Reef during our third expedition to the Great Barrier Reef and Coral Sea, titled The Northern Depths of the Great Barrier Reef. And uh, if anyone watching, we're just viewing this beautiful pelagic squid here. Uh, we've been watching it for last five minutes or so and it's it's changing color in front of us so we've got these um, beautiful uh, brown bands along its body and we're just following it slowly down to the sea floor um, today's dive is quite a spectacular dive um, up a sheer vertical rock face of about 300 to 400 meters tall so we've just we're on our descent down to the bottom and we just stop briefly to have a look at this squid. And next to me, I've got uh, Marty McNeil from Queensland University of Technology. Do you want to say hello there, Marty? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Morning to everyone watching on shore. Hi to all our friends and family and colleagues back at home. Got a very interesting dive coming up today, hopefully. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. We've uh, been descending for about half an hour now, and we've seen a, quite a lot of animal life in the water column, haven't we? Lots of yeah, a lot lots of uh, hatchet fish. Hatchet on the way fish, down. yeah. So have a look up hatchet fish on uh, on the internet. They're really strange looking fish, uh, you know, shaped like an axe head. They're not very big, uh, but they're really brilliantly silver. Like when you shine a light on them, it's just this almost reflecting straight back into your eyes. They have these strange upward looking eyes and they have a series of photophores along the uh, the underneath side of, of their body. We could actually see these, uh, these, these cells that emit light and from our understanding of it is it's a way of um, uh, counter shading, camouflage for animals that might be looking above, looking up with the light higher up in the water column and these hatchet fish can use the, the, uh, the bioluminescence to, to shade out their shadows so that they become invisible. This squid's no hurry to, to yeah, leave, is it Marty? Very relaxed. Not bothered by us at all by the look of it. When we first came upon it, the, uh, the two feeding tentacles were fully stretched out, much longer than the body itself. So squids have two feeding tentacles with which have these club-like um, uh, suckers at the end and my, my knowledge of squid is they they shoot them out and clap them around the side of a fish and then draw them into the the uh, eight arms around uh, the main part of the body very effective predators live fast die young that's what we were told at uni a lot of squid on the Great Barrier Reef don't live for any more than than two years. Uh, they're born as uh, you know, like miniature versions of the adults, and they grow. Their their growth size just continues to grow, and then they die. There's no leveling out on their uh, their size. But they you know they're very effective predators. Uh, have excellent eyesight. Uh, they're uh, and this one in particular uh, is the biggest we've seen, I think, probably on this dive mm. so far. Yeah. Uh, we've seen quite a few cephalopods all the way through our journeys. Um, of course, the ones that we're really like, we get excited about are the Nautilus. And we've also seen Dumbo octopus. Yeah. But this is a really beautiful uh, squid. It's just something about the cephalopods, I don't know what it is. But makes them so, I don't know, mesmerizing to watch. What's that? Yeah. Is that a jelly? So we're getting from Georgia, Chirotuthus. Thanks very much, George. And we, we uh, very much appreciate all of our uh, experts and non-experts alike just providing input here, uh, asking, please ask questions. Um, likewise, we will ask questions back to you. Uh, we have a small science team on board here, uh, myself, Robin Beeman from James Cook Uni, Marty McNeil from Queensland University of Technology. Uh, we have Vicky Lowe from University of Queensland, uh, Valerie Cornett and Joan Lee from James Cook University. So uh, science team of five. 
Oh yeah, these the, the feeding tentacles coming out. If you have a look at the tips, you can just see where the the suckers start really appearing, almost halfway oh, down along yeah. the the ends there. Really is mesmerising, isn't it? Yeah. We got the, the guys are saying uh, that we're seeing more squid in the, in the other cameras. Uh, on the way down, we saw a, a few smaller squid, you know, much, much smaller than this. Um, and yeah, quite a lot of these hatchet fish and also a cutlass fish. That's another strange deep sea fish. Yeah. Oh, well, here we go. One. Here's the second one coming into view now. So we're at a depth of 1,035 meters. Uh, I think our target depth is 1,090. So we're, we're pretty close to the sea floor already. So clearly hanging out together. Mm. You can just see, make out the pen, you know, the, oh, the internal yeah. skeletal skeleton. It's like a, uh, it, 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 I mean, it's, it's quite, um, it's rigid, but it's flexible. Yeah. And Is unlike it? a cuttlefish, where you end up with that cuttlefish bone, that's mm. like foam. Uh, Is it more like cartilage, the squid one? Or I'm, I'm not, actually I'm not sure what it's made, made of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've pulled them out, yeah. um, and they, they're called a pen. Mm. They look pen-like. You can just make them out in this, this translucent body. Morning, Jeremy. I see that you just joined us there on the YouTube chat. That's right. I mean, we have a small science team on board, but we have a very large group of principal investigators um, all over the world, in fact, uh, most in Australia. But um, we've got... Uh, Jeremy Horowitz has just joined us from Townsville. Uh, Jeremy's our black coral expert. And uh, well, we'll see what we find today. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a really remarkable landscape that we're diving along today. Not reef like, I would say. Yeah, I'm not expecting it to be reefy. No. Hard rock. Yeah. Yeah. We are fairly close to the reef though. Do, do you want to just explain where we yeah, are? And... Yeah, we're in a um, part of Cape York. Uh, this whole no northern depths of the Great Barrier Reef, the, the main focus of, of the uh, voyage is in fact the Cape York Peninsula. So if you look at a map of Australia, look at the northeast side of Australia, there's this very long pointed peninsula. This is Cape York Peninsula and it's a very rem remote part of Australia. It's extremely difficult to get to. There is a, uh, a road that runs up the spine of Cape York Peninsula, but most of it's dirt uh, during the wet season, the summer season that's approaching now. Uh, it often gets flooded out. So many of the communities, people that live in the communities up there are quite used to being isolated from the rest of Australia for m months at a time. Uh, there's a handful of small uh, air, uh, uh, landing strips for aircraft. Uh, but uh, most people in, in Australia understand Cape York Peninsula as a frontier area. And so if you're a bold four-wheel drive enthusiast and you say you're going to the tip, if you say you're going to the tip in Australia, <laughs> everyone knows you're talking about going to the tip, tip of, of Australia, the tip of Cape York. So we're off the eastern side of that tip of Cape York. Uh, it's a frontier region in on land and it's a frontier area in the ocean and we're on the we've been mapping the continental slope now uh, for nearly two weeks and we're a place called D the detached reefs uh, the detached reefs are a very strange group of reefs that sit out to seaward of the actual great barrier reef shelf so the great barrier shelf with its oh, oh wow got a really this. spectacular jelly in front of us here Wow. Or Tina Fall. I wonder if Dougal Lindsay's watching. This is really amazing. Beautiful colour. We're just going to stop here and have a look. Wow. Wow. We need to that yeah, pause is here and get some really good video interesting. imagery of this one. Just in case it's something new or something that's not been seen yeah, in this region before, yeah. which tends to. 
Uh -huh. Ah, look at the shimmering. This wow. is the, the combs that, that use us to swim. Very nice. Did you see, it actually swam a little bit like a jelly, like that, mm. that larger mass. It looked like it was spreading out, like a, like a typical sort of uh, Medusa. Like a Medusa. It, does, it does this like tie fiber shape, whatever it's. Mm. Wow. Can you guys reach out to, um, to um, uh, Dougal on Slack and let him know we're, on, we're live? So Dougal Lindsay's at Jamstech in Japan, and he's our resident plankton specialist, uh, one of the world experts in uh, midwater uh, jellies, and, and uh, it, he's very focused on tinafores. And in our last dive, Marty, didn't we? We collected we collected uh, a, a tinafore, a very dark looking tinafore like yeah, this, didn't we? Yeah, it was. Yeah, didn't look exactly like this. It was different, but it was a dark one like this. Not, I mean, usually they're just translucent, translucent. Um, well, most of the ones we've seen have been translucent, but this mm, mm. one on the previous dive was a darker coloured one, and um, yeah. Dougal thought that that was an undescribed species, so we filmed it for a while and then we collected it for a DNA sample. Looks like we've got the seafloor coming into view as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We are, we are on a sampling day uh, here today. We're in a, a zone that allows us, uh, and our permits allow us to do uh, in, invertebrate sampling. So we're just having discussion here as to uh, whether we can do that for this Tina for. I, I can't recall anything like this. No. So we're using a whole range of different tools, communication tools to reach people ashore. Of course, there's the, uh, the chat on Facebook and, and YouTube, but we're also using Slack here to directly communicate with our, our colleagues around the world. I think maybe we should sample it uh, in the absence of not getting more information from Dougal. He hasn't yeah. responded. I'm not sure if he's online yeah, we're gonna, today we're or not. We're going to do a sample. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Dougal's particularly interested in these Tina Fours. The one that we uh, that we sampled the other day hadn't been seen in Australian waters before, had it? Mm, uh, yeah, well at first we thought it may have just been a range expansion, it may have been a species that has been is known in the northern hemisphere waters but not been seen down here before. Um, but on closer closer inspection it looked like it may have been a new undescribed species. So, um, so we collected that one and to take a DNA sample for the museum and um, I think we'll do that with this one again today. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, all this vision is being uh, stored on board, we're uh, collecting in 4K vision. It's down sample, of course, to do live YouTube feeds, but uh, we do have the original uh, vision that we take ashore, and that, that ends up being shared amongst the, the other principal investigators. Uh, along with that, we have two, two other ways of uh, recording imagery. So we take still, still photos from the 4K imagery um, with a software called Squiddle. So every five seconds, a photo is taken and also an, an event logger. There we go. It's like a little cloud of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Slope that sucker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there's a something that looks maybe a holothurian coming into view. Now. Yeah, is it on we're the seafloor or is that in the water? We're just getting the, the seafloor coming into yeah. view now. 
it's been pretty interesting <laughs> just getting down to the bottom, yeah. isn't it? It's nice oh, and cold here, 4.5 degrees Celsius. Up on the surface where we are at the moment, it's about 26.5 degrees Celsius. Mm, very comfortable. Uh, we've been sailing along the edge of the Great Barrier Reef, uh, well, for the last two weeks, but uh, this morning we went around uh, Southern Small Detached Reef. That's the closest reef to where we are. It's one of these strange detached reefs that seem to come up out of nowhere. Well, now we know what they're rising out of. Uh, this very, uh, this relatively flat uh, ledge that's around 400 to 600 meters depth that, that juts out underneath the Great Barrier Reef like a, a, a patio mm, uh, yeah. on, a, on a house. It just, it's quite a broad ledge and these detached reefs no, are rising up rising up from around five about five six hundred meters depth up to the surface so these would have to be much much older reefs compared yes. to the current great barrier reef yeah. and we're now like at this the, could be one of those blocks that yeah. we knew uh, was on the seabed here So we're just getting our first look at the uh, at the seafloor here, and very rough, very rough. Wow, big blocks. Ooh. Does not look reef-like to me at all. No, not at all. Yeah. So when we were looking at our um, 3D bathymetry map, bathymetry model. We, the seafloor at this point, we it's thought was 1,090 meters, and this we're now at 1,070 meters. So this boulder is potentially 20 meters high. Yeah, yeah, really dramatic landscape. Oh, mm. what's this? Another squid. Another Chirotuthis. I forgot the got that right. So we saw. If you've only just joined us, we've actually spent a bit of time with two Chirotuthis squid higher up in the water column. Or maybe it's followed us all the way down here. Mm. It's great to have it against <laughs> this background and get a sense of the scale here. Do we need to try to find a flat spot for uh, in in a moment. Thanks, J-Rod. We'll just linger here for a little bit. Can you put the lasers on, please, guys, just to, so we can get a sense of scale here? Okay, so these are 10 centimeter wide lasers, so that's a pretty decent size squid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good half a meter across, maybe 60 centimeters. There's quite a few small fish in the around here, Marty. Yeah. Wow, this is rugged. Mm. Okay, so with the dusting of of sediment yep. on everything, well, it's pretty common. But look how look how blocky yeah. this is. This does yeah, not look yeah. like reef reefal material at all. Mm, mm. A few sponges on it. Yeah, so it looks like we've descended right on top of one of those blocks that we thought was there or could see in the. In the oh, it's still going down. All oh, right, yeah, <laughs> so we're huge. We're, we're trying to get to the bottom here, but it just keeps uh, dropping away underneath us. And the idea of today's dive is we're going to climb up these vertical walls. So we are. We do know that it's it's probably around about a three four hundred meter vertical rise. But right now we're just looking for a little bit of flat ground to to uh, just take sediment sample. Oh, oh, another Coratura this coming in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, we've got thing we're attached. all over the place here. 
A lot of fish. No, yeah. Only look, look at yeah, them all. Yeah, a lot of fish. You all couldn't see that, but we can see it in one of our other cameras. Quite a, another one of those squid come and gave us a little hug. Yeah. So John Pognos Pognoski is joining us from CSIRO in, in Hobart. Uh, welcome John. aboard, John. Good to, good to see you around. Uh, John's one of our ichthyologists. Uh, oh, another squid down here. A lot of fish. Mm. Lots of fish. Very small. So John's mm. one of our ichthyologists helping us ID uh, animals, uh, fish rather. And lots of sponges on these rocks. Mm, I think yeah, but look at this out. one. This is deep red. Look at the colour of this. Wow. Just hanging there very quietly. Got an eel in the background or a um, probably cutthroat eel of some kind. There is it's sneaking up behind it. It's almost like it's asleep. Yeah. Of course, it's pitch black down, at, you know, we're over a kilometre down. It would be normally pitch black down here deep red very different coloration but same similar sort of shape to the uh, the chiratooth is bigger um bigger fins though oh isn't yeah it? the side flats yeah yeah very pretty this looks like one of these carnivorous yes. sponges <laughs> no, i'm trying to look one, at two things at <laughs> yeah okay lots <laughs> lots is happening the squid, a lot going sponge. on here <laughs> so mary geekins from uh queensland museum is the uh, curator of invertebrate uh, taxonomy and uh, he's particularly interested in carnivorous sponges and we collected a what looks like carnivorous sponge that sort of feathery Christmas mm. tree like um, colony just down here in the center now we collected one a few dives ago didn't we yes yeah very okay. delicate all um, silicious yep. quite yep. quite stiff spines that looks like a carnivorous sponge it certainly to me. Does. Yeah. Yeah, and very so does, strange. So does the one behind it to the right. <laughs> yeah. Very delicate looking. But when we actually collected it, it was, no, they're, they're quite, yeah, you they're know, it was very spiky, wasn't mm. it? Yeah. It's quite large. Look at the size of that. So the lasers are 10 centimeters apart. Yeah, decent size. I imagine quite slow growing. Oh, here's our squid again. Squid friend. Got Squiddy's a different one. The other one was red. Yeah. That's, that, was, that might be the one that was on the side of the rock when we first came down. Oh, now the uh, deep sea jelly in the background. Mm. Look, they remind me of UFOs drifting. Gosh. Gee, there's a lot going on in the water yeah. column here. Oh. We've got three eels. Make cutthroat eels. John, what are we, are we looking at? Cutthroat eels. <laughs> Morning, Luke. Yeah, we'll take a push core in the sediment. Thanks, Cody. Cutthroat eels. Hmm. Yeah, welcome aboard, um, Luke. Luke and family. Luke's uh, it was on leg one from Brisbane to Cairns, and we'll be joining the Falcor for leg leg three after we uh, finish back in Cairns around about the thirty on the thirtieth of uh, October. So we're just going to settle down here and take a couple of push cores as we usually do. Uh, on the sea floor. So there's a sediment core, so that tells us what um, what the nature of the sediment is on the bottom of whether we're in a canyon or, for example, today we're in this what we're calling a plunge pool. Mm, <clears throat> because it it looks like a, a waterfall eroded landscape. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you imagine that you drained the ocean. <laughs> From where we are right now it would look like something like the horseshoe falls and the niagara falls it's really a spectacular feature yeah so we're calling it plunge pool because it just this 
very wide amphitheatre. It's about mm. 800 metres wide. Yeah. So nearly a kilometre across. It's circular in shape and it has these three or 300 to 400 metre high vertical walls. Mm -hmm. At the head of this plunge pool is what looks like a river valley, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It, it? You can see it snaking across this, this broad flat ledge and it ends right at the head of this plunge pool. Yeah, it's really quite remarkable. <clears throat> and so how do you explain something like that, you know, that's a kilometre deep? That's a really hard one. Mm -hmm. But what we're thinking is that this would be part of the ancient Australian landscape. So we're going back millions and millions of years mm -hmm. to when it was uh, exposed on land, exposed to water, fresh water, eroding yep. the landscape. And then through long geological time, as the edge of Australia has broken off, perhaps part of that Gondwana breakup, mm. the edge of Australia has subsided mm. in big blocks. And this is part of a block that is now dropped down into around 1,000 metres deep. So you imagine flying across an ancient bit of Australian continent from millions of years ago and now is drowned here, exposed you know, as, mm. as it is a thousand metres deep. It's the only way you can explain it. That's right. You can't yeah. form these kind of this, carved that, that amount of erosion. erosion in the underwater landscape just mm -hmm. if it was always underwater. It <laughs> yes. just, it's impossible. So of course we had to come and have a look. Yeah. Using ROV Sebastian. Yeah, and it's, all, it's very busy down here, isn't it? Lots of squid and fish so far. But most of that's, yeah. of course, we're very curious about that. But one of the real goals today. It's terrific. Wonderful. Thank you very much, J Rod and Cody. Yep. So we'll dust ourselves off and head back over to that hard rock. Yep. Oh, what's that? Is that a polychaete? Swimming polychaete. It's the water. Well, these are demersal animals. Demersal being swim in the water column, but close to the sea floor. It's uh, it's as busy as I've ever seen mm. on any dive. It is, isn't it? it? Really is. So many fish, squid. We got jellies, tina fours. I wonder if this plunge pool is like some big catchment, you know, the <laughs> animals swimming along and they, they basically fall into this huge hole on the seafloor. Who knows? Um. Uh, just having a discussion here about uh, sponge collection. Uh, we've only just arrived on, this, on the bottom of the seafloor. There's quite a lot of sponge diversity around us. We've got these sort of large glo globular shaped uh, hexactinellid sponges right in front of yeah. us now. I think these are uh, farrier, if I've got my, oh, okay. my, my uh, taxonomy right. But we saw one of these really interesting carnivorous um, style sponges that we collected just recently. We're just going to have a bit of a scan around here and just see what else we've got. Um, but we have, we've got scope to collect uh, some sponge in coral colonies today mm -hmm. and we're, we've got and, and two styles of collecting so uh, it's sort of normal store in ethanol 
way of, uh, of storing them and we also got the flash freezing with the liquid nitrogen. Do you want to talk about that a bit, Marty? Just mention why we're doing the yeah, flash well we've freezing. Got, um, we've got colleagues um, working with us from various institutions, including um, Jeremy Horowitz and Tom Bridge from James Cook University in Townsville. And we're, we're collecting for a couple of different purposes, different projects. So in general, we're, we're collecting on behalf of the Queensland Museum uh, for their sponge collection. Um, but in addition to that, um, Jeremy's been invited to collaborate on a genome project um, where we're collecting collecting specimens that will be flash frozen for DNA analysis of their their entire genome um, and it's quite a large project with a lot of um, different institutions Ooh, involved. Oh look at this glass beautiful sponge. sponge involved, the Smithsonian wow. Institute are involved. And I think I see an animal inside it. Yeah. There's definitely something inside it. These classic hexactinellid sponges, you can see all the, the skeleton really well. Beautiful, gosh there. Wow, well, isn't that it's delicate? So intricate aren't they? Yeah. Now, what's living inside it? Maybe people are sure can tell us about this this Japanese love sponge. It's a bit like this, you know, where you have, you know, this wedding gift that you can get. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's definitely an animal inside it. If you look, look through the back. It, it's, it looks like one of these kind of sponges that yeah. Merrick's interested. Oh, there's a little shrimp inside, inside it. Yep. Yep. Trapped or can it get in and out? That's a big question. Interesting. So has it, <laughs> has it spent its entire life inside in this, this sponge? Wow. Just, just we, had a, we had a scientist on board, Eric Cortez. He said that uh, what happens is they'll, when they're small, they'll get in male and a female and they'll mate and all the baby shrimp can get out but the male and female can't and then that's why they become wedding gifts as well because you're eternally in one so, so we are going to we're going to collect this sponge and it'll just it'll go into a bio box No, that is that is beautiful. There's a lot on this rock here, Marty. This is a very good yeah, start to yeah. the dive, I've got to yeah. say. Just <laughs> that is quite a size.
Fantastic. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Three. All right. Terrific. Okay. Um, when you're ready, if we could head back over to that rock and zoom in quite closely on the rock face, there were quite a few other smaller sponges that we were quite keen to have a closer look at. So there was a question um, about the associates, what do we even do with the associates um, when we have no researchers for that specific animal aboard? Well, um, part of the research on the genome project is with respect to the associates as well. So they're interested in understanding those um, relationships between organisms. Um, so the genome project will collect the DNA and information about the organism that we collected, for example that sponge, plus the associates that were collected with it. Um, because so often you miss that information if you collect things in dredge samples or with nets and what have you and the associates fall off and you don't know what, what was living with what um, in situ at the time. Which is, and again, the beauty of having ROV Sebastian is that we get all of that context um, we get all of that surrounding context of the habitat um, the substrate which what different groups of organisms are living together for each thing that we collect so it really gives us a lot of information other than what we get from the actual collection itself Oh, another one, the same. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this rock is just covered in <laughs> different sorts of sponges. I'm sure there's other things too. And the larger ones obviously stick out, and we can see them quite obviously, which. Um, We'll let the sediment clear and there'll be lots of small things on this rock as well that we're going to sort of take a moment here and zoom in and, and see what some of the smaller cryptic things that are living on this rock. Because some of these carnivorous sponges that we've been talking about can be really, really small. Yeah, that's right. The first time we saw them, they were just a tiny little fringe on the top of a rock yeah. and they were only about a centimetre high. They quite strange had like a little disc at the top. <laughs> and uh, we ended up collecting them, we, we found out what they were. But these ones in front of us are quite more obvious. Yeah. Uh, there's quite a, there's, there's more of them here. Yeah. Have a real almost Christmas tree like shape about them. Not sure if we've temporarily lost our YouTube stream. How are they? Hello? <laughs> Cute little sea star there. <laughs> More of these fish. Have we have we identified these fish yet? Do you know, Marty? Uh, I think a few people have asked if we can zoom in a bit on the fish and see if we can get an ID. Yeah, I can see quite a. Uh, a good mouth under them, like mm -hmm. a good sized jaw. Here we go, there's a close up. I wonder if John Ognoski is watching. Very silvery. Quite a bit mouth, don't they? Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. so. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, what is it? Is it? Yeah, there are. Um, it's not no. It's not an anemone. There is a type of sea cucumber that does that too. Yeah, puts right. its tentacles in its mouth and sucks them off. Okay. Some sort of benthic sea cucumber, or you know, or attached. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. up there. That's that's yeah, one of oh, these kind yeah, of sponges. That is, yeah, it's just on the edge. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah, right in front. That's right. that's yeah. definitely one. Yeah. Yes, that's the one that Merrick was talking about that he yeah. used quite a bit of the sample to make his microscope slides and what have you. Yeah, and it's quite a look at them all. They're actually yeah. all over here. Okay. See all these here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I, I was with Jeremy and we were trying to fix. Yeah. They're small, they're only yeah. about a centimetre or two across. I think we suctioned them last time, didn't we, Jared? Yeah. Yeah, I was with Jeremy and we're going, what the heck is this, you know? And yeah, we didn't know what they were, no. were they? We were having all sorts of guesses yeah. and every phylum. <laughs> Turns out they were kind of <laughs> sponges. And that was a newly, un, it was, it's an undescribed species, it was an undescribed species. Yeah. We ha we haven't actually moved very far. <laughs> We've just <laughs> been around right. this one boulder. There's a lot on here. Oh, is this big an enemy in the back? Let's not get distracted. We're yeah. on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> mission to collect these carnivorous sponges. They're tiny. They're about the size of your thumb now, and they're fringing all over the the, uh, the corner of this big block here. Do you see it's just under the, at the back here? Mm. Oh, just oh, down yeah. there? Yeah, I yeah. see now. Yeah. Yeah. Now trying to collect these tiny little sponges is going to be a very delicate operation. So that's what we're doing at the moment is just hovering, trying to find um, a position where Sebastian can settle down and get stable. John saying Lepaniectus. I've got that right. Le Lepaniectus. Um, the fish? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll we'll try to get some more close-up shots of the uh, of the fish as we move yes. along. There, John. So we're just manoeuvring the uh, Sebastian now just to um, get a closer. Uh, a better angle on this on the corner of this big block Okay, we're going to try the slurp gun. That worked last time, didn't it? Yeah, that's how we collected them on a previous on the previous voyage. There it is, right? That's tiny, isn't it? Yeah, really tiny. Yeah, I, yeah. Me I remember looking at this for a while after we brought the sample back on board, going, you know, scratching our heads. It looks so different to all the other sponges that we've just in around it here. It does. It doesn't it. But the sponge wasn't even in our thinking when we were trying to figure yeah. out what they were. But look, actually, if you notice close up, there's a lot there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how they were when we saw them on the previous expedition too. There was a bunch of them on on a hard rock surface, mm. like this deep water 
There he goes. And there was a whole group of them kind of together. Yeah. And is it clustered just under here? Mm, there's one below there yeah. as well. That one went in. That slurp gun gets a lot of use, doesn't it? Yeah. Very useful. It's a very handy tool. Yeah. Handy for all sorts of things. I think the biggest challenge today will be getting a rock sample. Yes, that was on my mind as you said that. And I think we might even just try and look for a loose clasp, even if it's loose, it still yeah. will give us a sense of what the rock type is. Yeah, for sure. And yep. then if we That's can fall back. break something off in situ, that would be even better. Uh, it looks a bit bigger, a yeah. bit more um, sitting by there. itself. There are a lot there though, yeah. isn't there? As soon as you get it's your eye in, you yeah. think you're seeing one, and then as soon as you get your eye in, you're seeing... Half a dozen. Yeah, we shouldn't, um, you know, we have to remind ourselves what we're trying to do here. It, it, this is a kilometre down under the water. We're on a vertical wall. There isn't much underneath us. We're not actually sitting on any, any hard substrate. And the guys are trying to suck up something that's about the size of your fingernail, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> Whilst floating around in three-dimensional space. That's right, while the ship's bobbing around in the ocean. So, you know, it's... It's not a trivial exercise. There we go. Well done. Yeah. All right. I think that's that'll do it. We got four or five, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jerod. All right. So we'll we'll still stay quite zoomed in on this rock face. There's a few things around. Yeah. I wonder if that's. Is that a brachiopod there? I thought I saw a brachiopod before earlier on. I'm not sure if about that specific one there. But, um, yeah, bit hard to tell from that angle. Hard to tell from that angle, but yeah. that's all right. And we have seen brachiopods mm. quite a lot mm. on this this um, northern depths of the GBR, um, which I really like looking at, you know, because they're just such an ancient animal. And here they are relicked in the deep Great Barrier Reef. And which dive was it? Was it Tideman Knoll? There, there was a lot of crevasses, yeah. little overhangs, and they were just filled with brachiopods. From, yeah. I think from memory. Wow. Okay, I mean, I'm certainly no sponge expert, but they can take all sorts of morphological shapes. Yeah. This is an encrusting. An encrusting sponge style, yeah, and yeah, it really is encrusting. It's it's good that you say that because we've been on this one rock, this boulder. We haven't actually moved very far, and we've seen a real diversity of sponges yeah. here. This looks That's like a little stunastrid hydrocoral. Gosh, we're deep. Oh we are deep. Usually, they're found much higher up. Not sure. And no, that that looks like a stylastrid hydrocoral. Yeah, they're delicate white. The polyps are not obvious at all. Yeah, 
Yeah, you usually find Stylastra is, you know, a bit higher, 400 meters. Mm. A golf ball style sponge. Yeah, this is sponge heaven here today. Of those little sponges there now, yeah. Too. But we've collected plenty of those, yeah. Should be enough there to keep um, keep Merrick happy, yeah. Merrick Eakins is, is the curator of invertebrate taxonomy at the Queensland Museum in Brisbane. Yeah, busy wall. Looks like we've got a feather star in the back. Mm. Just out of focus there. I particularly like the stalked crinoids, the, the sea lilies. Another one of these Another ancient relic. relic mm. relict animals. So this is a feather star, uh, a comatulid feather star. So it's mobile. You can see its legs. They yep. can cling to the rock. And uh, a dive or two ago, you saw one swimming. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I think I was at lunch <laughs> during that, but uh, certainly caught up and looked at the footage. Beautiful pink one uh, swimming in the water column, which uh, if you follow the crews on social media, you can follow the hashtag EdgeGBR and you'll see those images and video snaps uh, on YouTube. Um, wow, big anemone here. So I wonder if it's one of these fish-eating anemones, or is it just tiny little <laughs> plankton that it slurps up? You know, we, we I don't see too many fish around at the moment, but when we first got down here, a lot of small fish. I wonder if we should try and grab one of those cobbles that's sitting mm. in that crevice there. We might yeah. try and do that while we're parked here. All right, J-Rod, um, are you able to just breach in and just see if there's anything loose here? Uh, we're looking for a rock. Some oh, loose yeah. stuff over there too. And if no luck here, J Rod, maybe ran on to the left, you can see some, some cobble sitting on, on the rock there. So if this rock is all part of the ancient Australian landscape which we think it, it looks like just from the this like waterfall carved mm. uh, surface we're, we're um, exploring then we definitely need a, some rock samples and we can do age dating and, and mm. look at um, the geochemistry and things like that Okay, it's mm, loose. It's That's loose. good. Yeah. Good to know. Just going to reposition here. Because it's no easy thing getting leverage, even though the uh, Sebastian's over two, two tons in weight. Three tons in weight. It's a pretty heavy beast in air, but down here it's neutrally buoyant. So you're pulling with one arm, the, the forces are. Uh, you don't have a lot of purchase, mm -hmm. do you, to mm -hmm. to really uh, to grab? Good morning, Jody. Jody Webster. 
nice to see that you're uh, joining us on the live stream in Sydney. Try very hard to get a piece of rock from here, even if it's a loose cobble, not um, not in situ off the rock face yeah, itself. Yeah, this it looks rock looks, looks really hard, doesn't it? So a, a bit of loose bowl is probably the best we're going to get here. There we go. That's a good size. Yeah. Good start there, Jaira. Thank you. Pop it in one A, please. So Jody Webster and myself are out here on the RV Zona. This is the the large German research ship. Uh, we're yeah. out here in 2017, yeah, uh, yeah. mapping this area. We when we first detected this this plunge pool, and uh, but we never had the the ROV capability that we have with the Falcor. So this is quite exciting for Jody and I to come back here and do a really syst uh, systematic mapping and sampling uh, expedition. So Jody's joining us from Sydney. Uh, he's uh, a associate professor of marine geology at the University of Sydney and uh, has we, we work very closely together to develop these expeditions. sponge eyes back on. What's this down here? Guys, can you just yeah, zoom in? Yeah, okay, sorry. Just uh, maneuvering. Look like an anthemastus soft coral. Okay. It's a plug into that. Yeah. These, these vase yeah, type one style one sponges. One. Mm -hmm. So this is this one boulder at the very bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we haven't we, started climbing up the cliff We haven't yet. done anything yet. We're, <laughs> we've literally just been hovering around this this one boulder at the very bottom of this 300 meter cliff. Just bear with us here, we've just got some positioning issues going on that we're sorting out with the vehicle. Just pulling the uh, Sebastian off the bottom now. Oh, it's a fun of That's quite that long. Yeah. Oh, another squid coming into view now. Oh, yeah. With its tentacles out. Yeah. So we're just dealing with some alarms here, and uh, it's best that we just pull the Sebastian off the bottom. What are you looking for, Jared? 